money and everyone. Uh, the project is called Refugee Empowerment uh, Program. At its stance, its main uh, reason is to help refugees. Uh, and I will explain why in detail. Okay. So the project is as its main refugee and as I intend to be a refugee. And if the need arises, needy individuals as well. It's aim uh, to empower refugee asylum through education, skill development, and job placement. So, how does the need arise? Why, why do we have to create such an uh, initiative, uh, such kind of project? Uh, the main reason for this project came from the fact that uh, I was a refugee, I had my own personal problem. Uh, I arrived in this country as a refugee and there was nobody to help me. So I understood from my own problem there is a need uh, to this kind of problem. And I also looked into my uh, community in the Auckland area, where there is around between 25 to 30,000 people who have been residing there for the past, I mean, who have been migrating since uh, late 1980s. Uh, and we haven't had any community center. So displaced Europeans arrived in the Bay Area uh, in, a, in a bigger number and lately as well. Uh, the main reason to that is we have political issues back home and uh, young people come all the way uh, from East Africa, crossing all Atlantic Ocean through the Mexico border. All people come here as a means of uh, looking for their uh, children, but then they eventually stay here because uh, they don't have to go the way how life is back home. Uh, people get married and then they bring their wife, children and then eventually stay in the United States. Um, the need of help is great. Um, Arriving with little or no English knowledge, uh, our education system is very poor and they hardly know English a lot. Uh, arriving with very uh, low skill, uh, eager for help, uh, there is not any European community in the Auckland area. And Auckland is called the biggest community uh, of European descended in the United States. Uh, the location of this project will be from now in Auckland and upon uh, having a good experience, we. Uh, hope to uh, encourage it to other areas and other communities, or be it in the United States or other parts of the world. Uh, members of this project, I have uh, other four people with me in this project. Uh, they most of them in uh, summer colleges or uh, away because of holiday time. Uh, but uh, we've been participating in a number of initiatives, uh, like I've been involved. Uh, and I'm part of this document. What we have done so far uh, that goes in line with uh, the goals of this project is that we produced uh, English to Greenian translation, elaborating uh, how they can easily learn, which I'll show you in a picture and describe it later. And we also produced a connection with other community centers and organizations that are willing to help us in this uh, project. So, the goals of the project the most important one is the education, which is in line with the million people. And like I said, uh, uh, most of the people that are coming here, they don't speak English at all. And some of them, they don't even speak English at all. So it's basic English, how to read, write, and speak. For this one, we want them to be there in the project as much as they can come to them. Uh, and eventually, at the end of the day, give them a graduation as well, so that it will draw the attention of the community, and they will see we're doing something, and hopefully, uh, the project will be a project of the uh, given basic computer skills, Microsoft and Internet access, email. Now in the workplace, you need to know how to use Microsoft. You need to know how to use email. Uh, every job you apply in the United States, they always tell you, give us your CV or in, go to this link and apply to this link. So although we aim to help them through resume writing and your placement, uh, we want them to be independent at the end of the day to do it by themselves. Um, and another initiative with this uh, is environmentally friendly transport system, a bicycle system. It has been tried before, but it was cut off. We want it back because we can't afford to give them money every day for their transport, but we would have them rather come with the bicycle to the workplace and give the bicycle. And uh, we, we people that had a background of bicycle riding, uh, teaching them how to get driving license and members of community have both their, their, have both to help on this, they say, Bring us people, we can help them how to drive, and you could do the paperwork. Okay, 
uh, previous uh, involvement, like I said, we try to assist Asai because I know a lot of work and studying the history, they didn't have the right documentation and uh, other members of the uh, the project has also been doing a bake sale for orphanage kids. We find this to be not making them independent. Uh, so we want to go to something that we would teach them so that they can become independent and feed themselves. Uh, that's the main reason why this project has been initiated, to give them basic skills and education. Okay, some of the collaboration with some organizations, the East Bay Refugee Home, Catholic Charity of the East Bay, Vietnamese community, they kind of assisting us. We use making use of their space. Uh, Eritrean News for Change, the Eritrean for Democracy Change, they have a little bit of political involved, but we just want their support. We don't want them to be the overriding at this. We want their support because our people go there for a meeting and so on. So, implementation of seed grant, uh, basic office stuff, uh, printer, uh, desktop. Uh, we're going to need a desktop computer to document our stuff, a couple of chairs, uh, if necessary, bus tickets for those who come really interested to, do, to make use of the project, and the bicycle initiative, other seed grants, uh, and then eventually to build it by uh, doing other involvement. And indirect benefits from this, building strong community involvement, community center, social gathering, integration with other communities in the area, uh, I've been involved in uh, assisting the World Refugee Day so that they could come in, uh, show their culture and integrate with other communities. So that would be indirect for maybe, hopefully, in a long run, uh, part of the communities involved in this. And lastly, the last question, this is what I say, it's something that we produce it. So this is like, in a graphic way, let's say, uh, hill running. So in my country, it's words, it's mobii, and then in English, capital letter and small letter, and then how you say it in my country's language, in my own country's words, so that they can easily understand it. So we produce it around 90 pages like this. That would give them a basic way of getting into their education level. Um, we have enough skills in the Bay Area. We have a lot of engineers, uh, teachers coming there, and they end up working at a very low income jobs, like in a grocery store or security, and they are willing to get involved like I mentioned previously on the diary team, uh, the community is also willing to get involved. Uh, like I said, bring that one person for one month, I'm willing to take them on, and other projects as well. So I'm willing to take them. Great, we have just over seven minutes for questions. Are the refugees you're looking to help here all here legally? Uh, the refugees are legally. They have been given documentation, but there are also asylees. But for them to be able to get help, they must apply to the USCIS, uh, United States uh, Citizenship and Immigration Services, and we must have the proof that they give them, they give them a receipt, they apply. So we don't want them to be backlogged, and then eventually when they get their paper, they're still going to come back to us. So we want them to go straight ahead with their job and skills. Some of those are legal services. Would you be providing those, or, or do you have partners who? Yeah. Like I mean, we, we have lawyers in our community, but I don't have that expertise. And what I would, what the project would want to do is have a, a greater community involvement. So maybe we could sort of set a section of this that says, hey, we have lawyers here yeah, who's been uh, granted a certificate to work. But that's not part of what you're. Uh, it's not part of this, but we would like them if they really could get involved. It's more like uh, beyond our control, I would say. I mean, it could be, but you know, they kind of require money to pay them and stuff. And uh, this kind of project, they just want to have a kickstart so that community center will be formed. So what, what, why, why do you need to teach them to drive? Bay Area, BART, buses, why do they need to drive? Well, that, that's great, but uh, one of the main things in the workplace, uh, even as a security to apply, uh, what they ask you is they have a driving license. You gotta have a driving license regardless of the bar or uh, the bicycle system is even better that's why it introduces the bicycle system of transport. Uh, but in the workplace they always ask you why uh, do you have a driving license? So and, and it's a basic skill, someone needs to know how to driver's license or, or government issued ID. Yes, it's government issued ID. No, I know, but are they, they you're saying they're specifically asking for a driver's license. Versus a government issued ID, which you don't need to be able to know how to drive to have. Uh, well, uh, as I 
said, we, we're trying to give skills to them. And I believe personally a driving license is a skill somebody needs to have. And like I said, the community members want to get involved in access services. But yes, it's a government issued uh, ID and we about $200 to teach all these people to drive. Do you need, uh, tell me how you came up with that budget, I guess. Which budget? How much? $200 for the driving component of your budget? Okay, yeah, let's say it's per month. Uh, I don't know, the total amount is $200, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, here's something that we are looking at. We are looking at first distributing those people to members of communities so that they can assist us, uh, crowdsourcing and saying, okay, we have so much people that want to do the drive and if you could take us 1% per month. But eventually we hope to kind of either raise our own money and develop, a, have a second hand car. Uh, with the paper thing, uh, we kind of assist them for what kind of answers they're looking at. Uh, so the 200 actually came from the point of uh, uh, having to pay insurance and for the petrol, I don't know if you say for months or per month. Man, you have other uh, ventures that you're involved in right now, correct? Not ventures, but initiatives, yeah. Okay. Um, what is it exactly that you hope to get out of a resolution fellowship? Okay. The other projects that I'm involved with has to do with giving people money for transport and for food. And I've, I've got the experience out of it. I'm not making them independent. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, not with the same group as the interview. I'm involved now, because I'm mostly college and high school students. Um, and I want to get out of it. I want to be able to give with my uh, colleagues the skills and the education that they need, so that they could be independent. They could be tomorrow, they do not look for you uh, for grocery or for transport money. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's better to stay away from that. It just, uh, the previous uh, grant that was raised under the uh, other project of Eritrean Asylum Assistance Applicants program was to help asylees, not refugees or the individuals. But what do you personally hope to get out of being a fellow? Out of being a fellow? I want to start this initiative that hopefully will go to a community center. There is no community center in my area. I want my people to benefit out of this and it grows very well, probably to be tried in other areas and in other, to be distributed in other areas. Okay. What's the plan to make this project sustainable? You know, I mean, especially if it's $200 a month just for the driving component, uh, you know, you'll need a lot of cash uh, quite frequently. So how, how would you hope to make this sustainable? Okay. Um, first, uh, on, on the driving thing, we try to, the main idea is to try to get your own vehicle that belongs to this uh, initiative. So you, uh, you just have to pay your insurance and you pay for money every month. And second to the rest of the projects, we want communities to get involved. We want them to give their inputs. Uh, we, we like our uh, dancing, and we can we, we aim to kind of create a dancing event where we can charge people. The sport, we, we run it. I mean, our people are known for running. I run myself. Uh, we want to do it for a cause, and then people to donate to it. Uh, fun walk, where you can just put the shirt, and then you can sell the shirt, for a double price, not very expensive. You can get it at the cheap and low price uh, if you ask in a bulk. And then uh, in Auckland we have an area called Lake Merritt where people actually love to walk around. So sell the shirts, get more money, and the, like, like him uh, mentioned, uh, I have a bit of skills on my own on asking more grants from other organizations or funds. And yeah, I would work on that too. Plus, my, my fellow friends also they kind of raise money to assist orphanage kids. So it's not just me, but also my uh, colleagues on this project have some skills. So the, that is the greatest skill in, in the Bay Area. You just they end up doing lower kind of jobs. So we can give them guys to be involved as well. Those are the skills. And for one more question. Is there any? How essential are each of your partnerships that you mentioned? Can you do this without them? I do this without them. I need them to get involved, but I don't want it to be sort of a one man project, to be honest with you. Uh, at the end of the day, I want it to be a community center, community involved uh, initiative to build a community center because we don't have any, we haven't had any community center before.
Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we're going to give the judges about two minutes to wrap.